A good IPM program begins when we establish plants in the landscape by properly matching a plant to the most appropriate site in our garden, we can avoid a lot of problems, uh, particularly those with insects and disease. We can also avoid the disappointment of a plant that fails to bloom, doesn't thrive, or even dies. As we look around the landscape, it's composed of uh, many unique characteristics, and these change as we move from one part of the landscape to another. We have uh, shady locations and sun to consider. We want to look at the soils. The, the soil type might vary throughout the landscape, as will the moisture conditions in different areas. Now, some of these characteristics we can alter. For example, you can thin some of the branches out of a tree to allow more light to penetrate beneath it. Of course, this is something that you would have to do over and over again because new branches are going to grow. A good example of long-term maintenance for a plant that's not perhaps in the exact uh, appropriate site would be an azalea. Azaleas prefer um, shady location, good drainage, and acidic soil, and that's the catch for a lot of Oklahoma gardens. We have rather alkaline soils. Now, of course, we can amend the soil to lower the pH and make it more acidic, but this is something we would have to do over and over again to maintain a healthy plant. The better choice is to appropriately select plants that are going to thrive in the existing conditions. As we select plants for the landscape, we want to be sure to find plants that are matched to our local conditions. The first question we want to ask is, will this plant survive the winter in my garden? And the answer to that is found in the USDA hardiness zone. We could find information on hardiness zone on most plant labels. And we can also find it in catalogs and as well as books. Now the USDA hardiness zone relates to a map that was developed by the United States Department of Agriculture that maps the average minimum temperatures for different areas of the country. In Oklahoma, most of the state falls within zone 7 with an average minimum temperature between 0 and 10 degrees Fahrenheit. In the far south, uh, southeast corner of the state, the hardiness zone is zone 8, and in the northern edge, as well as the panhandle, that falls within zone 6. Now remember, this represents the average minimum winter temperature, and of course temperatures deviate somewhat from that. But it's a good start in helping us select appropriate plants for the landscape. Another thing we want to consider are the light characteristics. Our labels and catalogs are going to tell us if a light needs full sun, part sun, full shade. But what does that mean? Full sun means an area receives six or more hours of direct sunlight each day. Some plants are labeled as part shade or part sun, and these tend to do well in the filtered shade that we might find beneath a pine canopy or in an area that receives sun for part of the day and shade for another part of the day. Now one thing you want to consider is that morning sun and afternoon sun are very different. Uh, afternoon sun is much hotter and more intense, so those plants that are labeled part sun, part shade, I tend to give morning sun or filtered light throughout the day. Plants that are labeled as requiring shade, they will do well in a deep shade area underneath the canopy of a tree. Some of them will be okay if there's just a filtered light throughout the day. You want to be careful not to push those requirements too far. You'll see foliage start to burn up if it needs more shade from the sun. Now another characteristic we want to think about is the moisture in our landscape. And this varies from one area to the next. It's affected by slope. Low spots tend to be wetter, while high spots tend to be a little bit drier. It's also affected by soil conditions and drainage. Uh, for example, a raised bed is going to have a really good drainage, and so that soil will support plants that, say, needs well-drained soil. Some plants are characterized as needing those wet spots, and while others are characterized as being very drought tolerant. That means once they're established, they can survive in very dry soils. Now as we select plants for the landscape, 
we want to consider all of these characteristics and it, it could be a little bit overwhelming but there's many resources available to us start with your plant labels and your catalogs for more information you could turn to books visit your local county extension agent as you're arranging plants in the landscape one thing to consider is to keep plants together that have similar requirements. We don't want to put a, a xeric plant that needs to be really dry right next to one that needs wet feet because one of those is not going to do too well. We'll take a closer look at soil type and how it relates to soil moisture as we continue to explore integrated pest management.